What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff here. Welcome back to the channel. All right, guys, we are coming off of the best week the market has seen since November 2020. Before I took a few days off to spend some time with family, I had made a video saying once again, we were at another make or break level, testing some of those January and February lows, which we previously bounced off of. And as you can see, this, this S&P moving up about 7% and the NASDAQ moving up 11%. There was a massive bounce. So in this video, I want to go over some of the catalysts behind the movement and also talk about was this just a relief rally or are we going to see continued movement to the upside? I'm going to break everything down for you. Let's get right into it. First off, as you can see today, a little bit of choppiness. We came back up to test this 446 level of resistance. I have this line drawn here for a reason. Not only was it resistance in after hours on Friday, but if you zoom out here to the 30 day, one hour chart, you can see back in early February, we had some support at that 446 level. Once we broke below that in mid February, we came up to test that and you can see that's very strong resistance. Multiple times we were rejected from that level. And I knew once again, once we got back up to that level, especially because there's been a good sign of an uptrend for the past few days, we were going to have some trouble with it. And of course we did. Not only is it normal for the market just to take a little bit of a breather and a cool down after a massive move like it's had in just a short period of time, I knew that resistance was going to be strong. We're going to have to try to test that again before we can actually move through it to the upside. But let's talk about exactly what happened intraday. You can see the wick at the open, and then we tested it right up until 12 noon Eastern time when Jerome Powell had stated a few different things. Now, the big reason for the movement to the upside was the Fed had announced that they're only gonna raise rates 25 basis points. Previously, before the issues between Russia and Ukraine, investors were really eyeing the 50 to 75 basis point hike. And when they saw that 25 basis point hike, it was a little bit of a relief saying, okay, we can have a more room to the upside. Now, I know there's a lot of things going on in the world, okay, and especially with inflation and everything that we've covered on this channel. But there's one thing I want everybody to remember that I've said that there's a lot of money on the sidelines. You can't just print, all right, 12 to $20 trillion, pump it into the economy, all right, and expect that money to actually just sit on the sidelines and not be put to, to use. So a lot of these big funds and firms have a lot of money on the sidelines. You've seen some massive sell-offs, okay, since the start of the year, and they were waiting for a prime opportunity, especially with some blue chip stocks, like the video was a bouncing just above that 200 level, AMD at 100, and a couple other deals from some good companies that were out there. It was natural to see a big push. Some of those companies went anywhere from 10 to 30% like I said, in just less than a week. But all this in all, where do we get to go from here? So this is what Jerome Powell had talked about today. If you don't follow Walter Bloomberg, you should. All right, uh, his Twitter handle is Delta1. You can see it right here. Be careful of some of the fakes that are out there. He is littered with information and he gets it out to you really, really quickly. This was the first thing that came out right here at the bottom that nothing would prevent the May FOMC 50 basis point rate hike, rate hike Okay, they're also saying that they are not expecting near-term progress on inflation. Those two things, I think, where investors started to spook a little bit, and it's because considering we have to go through April, by the time May comes around, where is inflation going to be? Especially because with oil prices rising, as you can see here today, crude oil is back almost at $812 right now. The markets are continuing to pull after a little bit of a recovery after Jerome Powell's speeches. But with crude oil continuing to move higher, you know that is the leading indicator when it comes to everything else, okay? At gas and oil prices move higher first, then your commodities will rise. That is just going to get spread out throughout the entire uh, CPI data that is going to be released, I believe it is April 12th. That's a big thing to eye very closely. The next thing I do want to talk about is the housing market, okay? Home sales are starting to slow down a little bit. I do think the home prices have reached just a bit of a point to where they need to cool down a little bit. Now, some people say, oh, when as mortgage rates are increasing, all right, it's gonna cause interest or um, home sales to come down a little bit. And there is some correlation that does uh, happen with that. However, just know that mortgage rates for the, uh, for the most part, 
all depends on what broker you're going through and how many uh, you know points it is to be able to get that loan. But a lot of times, mortgage rates are also very similar to the stock market, meaning when they know the Fed fund rate is going to raise or is going to be uh, risen in, in a few months, it tends to adjust. And that's why you saw mortgage rates rise just a little bit before a little bit of a pullback. But like I said, those things are in correlation, but they are not in a direct correlation. It also has to do with the fact that the amount of homes being built right now is at an all time low, especially when you compare it uh, decade over decade. All right, so this is another thing that investors are going to eye closely as if we do see a hard pullback inside the housing market, it is going to affect the stock market. Last thing I want to mention before we talk a little bit about the charts is what is happening with Russia and Ukraine. It seems like <laughs> the headlines are not really spooking the market like they were. Maybe this is just in my opinion, but this is what I am seeing. All right, it seemed like as soon as we got down to a little bit of a low, there would you know be tweets and information and headlines out there saying that there was talks, okay, of you know a, some of uh, discussions happening and possible uh, resolutions, and then when the market was ripping, there was going to be poor headlines saying that there's going to be no resolutions, okay, there were no agreements. All right, and more troops are moving in. It seemed like they were playing those levels pretty pretty closely, especially when you really have to pay attention to them. But it just seems like the market isn't moving like it was based on these headlines. So what does that mean for the near-term future? Unless there are static changes happening besides a normal progression of war when it comes to the war continuance, okay, look for the, this not to really affect the market when it comes to direct headlines, okay? everything that is happening as a byproduct as supply chain issues, all right, and, and so forth, that will continue to affect the market. But when it comes to headline issues, it looks like that's cooled down a little bit. Now, like I said, any type of real substantial progress, okay, that there is a little bit of, you know, agreement or resolution in the horizon, I'm talking a little bit more sustained than just rumors, all right, the market is going to be act, react very positive all right, in the short term, and I wouldn't expect that to the long term, but let's zoom out here and take a look at exactly where we stand, because I haven't covered this chart since I had went away, and I said we were back sitting at this critical level when SPY was around that 420 area. All right, we had that downtrend. If you zoom in just a little bit, just to make this chart a little bit nicer for you, as you can see, we've had this consistent downtrend that it looks like we've slowly broken out of. We've had a couple candles of confirmation. Here's where things change a little bit. Okay, we avoided that death cross, okay, a few days ago. And previously, the QQQ, which is off the NASDAQ, had a death cross, and we saw some movement to the downside. Now, I've been investing for quite some time now that when things are just too good to be true, okay, or seem like they're too easy, for example, everybody talking about the upcoming spy death cross, chances are market makers are just going to try to lure you in, lure you in, and then just absolutely face rip you and go the opposite way. So it's really no surprise that we did not see a death cross a few days ago about the, about the 14th and 15th. All right, and as you can see here, looking at these EMAs, that did not happen, but we approached that 100 day moving average. Now the 150 cross to the downside back in mid uh, February on the 18th and 19th. And as you can see, we're bouncing off that, which is also sitting at that 446 level. But we get a solid move to the upside, getting back into some candle, you know, some daily candle closes over that 448 to 450 levels. We're getting back inside that blue ocean. We haven't been trading above all three, all right, your 50, 100, and 200 EMAs since back in early January. And we really haven't been above the 100 moving average, except for two days where we both gapped up and then had the following day gap down, as you can see here from February 2nd. And then once again, on February 9th, that's about six weeks, we've been trading under these very important moving averages. Now, when you zoom out a little bit further, okay, looking at the weekly average, it does look like we did break a little bit of that pullback. But like I said, we still need that confirmation in order to give things to the upside. So I wanna give you not only a headline news of where we stand when it comes to Catalyst, okay, and market reviews, but also looking at where we stand from the charts. Now I'd said at the beginning of this video, pending anything catastrophic happening, a big pullback like we've seen 
I expected to happen. We were well overdue for it, all right? The SPY is almost closing into, actually pretty much right now, as what day we're in, we're almost closing to that second year of the bull run. And the, and the SPY getting out of the second year of a bull run without having at least a 10% all right, correction is very unlikely. The chances are very slim. I think around like 16, 70% of the time that actually happens. So we were overdue for that to happen. But like I said, if we can continue to move to the upside and have inflation still be within moderation, now when the April num numbers come out, expect them to be worse because like I said, the Fed fund rate was just raised and it doesn't even go, it doesn't even factor in those last um, CPI numbers don't factor in, okay, the increased prices of oil will be a little bit of choppiness, but we are starting to form a little bit of a base, at least to the short term. So guys, that's it for this video. I'll continue to keep posting. See you in the next one.